Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith and we uh, left off in the last video with me asking you for your feedback on what skill dice and or stat dice I should take for my two training points. Now just so there's no confusion about where we are day-wise and within the different phases of the game, we are still currently on day four, although we will be moving to five shortly. And in terms of where we're sitting in the adventure routine, where essentially I had gone ahead to this step here in recovery and I had chosen to bump uh, patches to six health because he was so far down on his health after the last battle, even though we won, which was awesome. And uh, so what we're gonna do is just, I know this is not normal, but we're essentially stepping back here to pick our training points again, because I left it up to you guys to uh, give me feedback, which you did in tremendous numbers. And I wanna thank all of you guys for the amount of comments and uh, the amount of views and likes and stuff like that on the video. It's crazy to see that much particip participation in these videos is awesome and makes me feel great because it makes me feel like I'm actually playing the game with you guys. So uh, I really appreciate everything you guys threw in there. And really, to be honest, every single response that I got during the video, not a single one of them was wrong or a bad idea. So even though right now I'm going to still choose two that I'm going to go ahead with, none of the suggestions were bad, but I can tell you the majority of those suggestions were uh, to either go with a dex and defense type setup or a dex and toxin type setup. It didn't seem like the nutrients uh, was a good choice. And even though in the prior video I said, hey, you know, nutrients is off limits, that's the one I'm picking. In hindsight now, after seeing the comments and also even just reading up on the dice a little bit behind the scenes as well, it actually does seem that toxins would be the greater uh, of the two in terms of choice for me right now. Reason being is that you guys pointed out, and I also noticed this myself, that when we move into the fifth day, we know that the equation to calculate baddie points is based on the number of day we're currently on plus, or sorry, times our gear lock, which would be five. So we will be moving into this five point stack. And once we move into the five point stack, the enemies are gonna get tougher. We're gonna need something that patches can do besides just rolling attack dice to get past the enemy's def uh, defenses, which they'll likely be boosting in those five point baddies. So nutrients, although helpful, isn't exactly the best. So I'm gonna actually return that one to the tray. I'm gonna keep toxins. Now I'm allowed to keep toxins because of again of the stars. I could pick either one of these. You don't need one to have the other, unlike some of these other skill trees where you have to have stem kit in order to merge into these other ones. Uh, and again, you have to follow the trail of arrows. Whereas this, you just pick whichever one you want. So toxins is the one I'm choosing. And for my second skill point, um, because, so essentially this was the first, it's already staying where it was. I took the nutrients just now away. I'm gonna use that training point to bump my decks up. And that was a really great suggestion. I got quite a few, quite a few times to say, hey, if we go ahead and bump the decks up, not only are we gonna be able to roll more on our attack, but we'll also be able to not roll more, but include other dice. So attack for me typically is three dice. A three dice is an attack. Uh, so that leaves me with only one left to move. Um, or I shouldn't say that, it's three right now in terms of attack dice to use, but I would use all of those dice to do that and I wouldn't have any decks for movement, I wouldn't have any decks to include special skill dice. So by bumping my decks up, it's gonna allow me to either use skill dice, add defense in there, all that kind of stuff. It's really gonna allow me to be a little more strategic in what I choose for rolling dice. And I like that. So the cool thing is with decks is if you choose to upgrade it, you do not have to roll for it, you automatically succeed. So we just tick this up to two and bam, we've now got the ability to use up to four dice or even a combination of dice and movement on the battle map giving patches that much more ability to kind of strategically move around the map and that's a good thing. So. We now have completed uh, this uh, training area here. We've already done recovery because I kind of had to step back and we chose, like I said before, to get patches from uh, low health all the way up to six health total. So now we can move into the new day. So new day is normal and we, that we just twist this over to five. So the counter has now bumped to five uh, and we get to start our next day. So we can follow the new encounter. So we're gonna go ahead and draw our encounter from the top of the deck and we're gonna run with it and see what happens. Okay, you guys ready for this? Because I don't know what it's gonna be, but it's gonna be exciting, I hope. Okay, so this encounter card says, a trap of my own making, too big and too many. I could never overpower or outrun them. Either this works or my journey ends before the sun sets. The plan, be my own bait. What could possibly go wrong? 
The trap is set just as the golden sun is beginning to sink, which I pray helps obscure my hasty work of covering the freshly excava ex excavated pit. Now I just need to screech like a wounded griffin, stand in plain sight, and hope they don't simply jump over the trap before tearing me limb from limb. All right, so it looks like we're trying to set a trap just for some uh, baddies. Now, currently we are still here, just outside or one progress point away from getting to Shellfish. And remember, when we do get there and we get to that, we, we don't have to on the next day that we gather that... Um, so essentially, once we finish an encounter, like say this one, this one, if we get to Shellfish, on the next day we don't have to encounter Drellin, but what really matters is our timer. So we have 10 days and currently we're five days. So we're making great progress because we haven't failed any yet. So that's really what's helping us out a lot. It's gonna give us a lot of leeway to either continue to do more encounters to beef up patches before we go ahead and encounter Drellin, or also be able to handle any losses that might come our way and we're hoping to avoid that. So let's flip this encounter card and see what we've got to choose between. So we've got either be the bait, be the bait, so our battle queue would, comp uh, would looks like it would be two five-point baddies uh, would be built from it. So we wouldn't be just building this based off the days times the uh, gear lock in this case. We'd be just grabbing two five-point baddies, which is crazy because uh, they're going to be super strong if we do that. Uh, this is the battle symbol on both choices. So regardless, we're fighting. We don't have a peaceful route there. Um, we have two choices though. So this one says, as baddies enter the battle mat, roll a d6, d6 for each. If you get a one to two, nothing happens on the traps. If you get a three to six, the baddie's stunned for the first two rounds, so that's nice. So basically you get a leg up to just kind of throw a lot of damage at them. That's actually pretty cool, and the odds are in our favor just by one. So this might be a good choice. Now down here, let's see what this one says. Maybe I shouldn't be the bait. Now with this one, it says you decide it's best to get in your own trap, meaning like dodging and weaving around the traps we've set in the ground, and fight around your spikes. So this one has a battle queue. It says two five-point baddies, the same as the top. But you have surprise, and baddies take one true damage any time they move to a new position on the battle mat, uh, including the initial position. So basically what it is, is you can move around the mat. If I started here, let's say, there's a baddie here, if I decide to go like this, in order for that baddie to get close to me, he'd have to move once and then twice. He would take two true damage just to get up beside me. Now this is only going to work for melee characters because melee characters are going to actually try to follow me around the map. A ranged character will sit in the back and that really doesn't have any effect on him. So the, the risk is if I choose the bottom one and I get any ranged characters, this effect is basically going to do nothing. So that's no... That, like. This one seems like the lesser of the two, although I, I'm not too sure. They're both fairly evenly matched because there's a bit of randomness and not knowing. Uh, now the randomness would be mitigated if I had had time to scout ahead and pick potentially a five point baddie to flip. I could know what's coming, but I chose on the last round to heal patches, which was much more uh, needed than anything else. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and do the top one. I think I'm gonna do the stun effect. So. I'm gonna go ahead and lay those traps and be the bait and have them come out and hopefully when we roll for them, uh, we can actually stun them for the first two rounds. And when a character gets stunned, I'm just gonna quickly grab our reference sheet here. So stun says, target loses its next turn, negative effects still apply, and then you place the stun effect die on the target. So essentially you're just referencing that that stun has occurred. So I'm gonna grab the stun effect die here from the box. Looks like this. Now the only thing about this game is it doesn't come with a counter, which is kind of silly in my opinion because you kind of need to be able to know how many times your character is stunned for reference. Um, I could go ahead and grab like a small d6 from something, but I don't have anything on hand right now. I didn't prepare that in advance because I didn't know this was a scenario I was going to get. But in my mind, just now thinking, I think it would be smart to have a d6 beside this, uh, this die to be able to count how many rounds this thing will be in play. We could also technically use a different side of the die like this and just pretend this is stunned just to kind of count it down. But I'm sure we won't forget. At least I hope we won't. So we'll go with that. Um, so anyway, so we got this stun die here. Uh, now, it, it, the, the actual uh, card here says the baddie's stunned for the first two rounds. So we may need more than one because we have two five-point baddies coming in. So depending on how things pan out, we may end up needing two stuns. So we'll, I grabbed those two dice, so we're ready to go there. So I'll just put them to the side for now because we don't even know if they're gonna affect the baddies that come into play. And now we can go into battle, as it says right here with this indicator, we can begin building our queue. Now, if we succeed at this, we get a progress point, which pushes, 
puts us at Drellin's doorstep in terms of wanting to fight him if we if we want to. We get two training points out of it. That's awesome. And uh, we also get some loot, which is never a bad thing. Too bad it's not Trove loot, but it's loot regardless. So here we go. Let's uh, let's build our baddie queue. So when we build a baddie queue, typically you grab, um, in this particular case, the baddie queue does not state to just use your baddie points, which would be times in your day by your gear locks to get a number. This one is already comprised. Our baddie queue is gonna have two five point baddies done. So here's our two five point baddies. I'm gonna flip them. One at a time, we'll start putting them in the lanes corresponding to where they belong. So here we go. Um, let's begin. We've got, ooh, what is this? It appears to be a Griffin Howler. Okay, so he's got a five initiative, so he's gonna go really early, which is bad. He's got five health. He attacks with three dice. Oh my gosh, that's super strong. He has dive, flight. Oh, we're familiar with flight because flight is, you know, the annoying one that allows him to get on, come off the board so he doesn't get hit. Signal, I'm not too familiar with, but we'll quickly reference dive and signal in a second. He is a ranged character and uh, yeah, throws three dice at us. That's pretty nasty. So we're gonna go ahead and get our five uh, damage here. Now we're gonna come over here to the very first row and he's gonna end up in lane number one. His initiative is five as it states right there. So we're gonna go ahead and flip this die until we find the fifth. There we go. He's in the track now, ready to go, put him on top, and he is a ranged character, or sorry, he's a melee character. Did I say ranged? I think I accidentally said ranged. He's a he's a melee character based on the uh, based on that right there. So he's gonna end up right here. Okay, so he's at least he's gonna be following us around the board. That's nice. We can try to toy with him because I don't really want to see too many ranged characters because they always sit in the back and they always mess with you. That's not too much fun. So here we go. Here's the next one. It is a oh, this one has wings. Probably gonna be ranged or something flying. Uh, come on, focus, focus, and it's not going to. Uh, here we go. It is a manicor. So we got uh, poison two, rage two, nasty. Poison is really annoying. Uh, six health on him, and he goes initiative three. So he'll probably go after us, depending on our role here. And our he's a ranged character, so he's going to annoyingly sit in the back and uh, cause us some grief. So we'll put our six tokens. Oh, that worked out pretty good. I had just enough damage token set aside. That was perfect. Uh, so this one's going to go into lane number two. He is ranged, so he's going to get the pinkish, purplish. Whatever color you want to call that, it looks more purple to me. And then we're gonna go ahead and flip this to three and put it in the track. So we've kind of got a little space here for four. It's likely probably what I'll roll because I think the average on my particular dice is three or four. So we'll see how we land. This guy is a ranged character. He's going in the back of the battle mat. And this is kind of the setup. So we've got two fairly strong characters going into this battle. So we've now done this. Um, now what we're gonna do, now it, it does technically say as baddies enter the battle mat, roll d6. Well, I probably should have done that as they had entered the mat, but we'll do them in order regardless. So we'll do the one right here. So I'm gonna roll d6, and what we're looking for here is we're looking for a three or a, three to a six. So three, four, five, six means that that baddie stunned for two rounds, which would be incredible because they lose their turn and I can just run in there and just hopefully beat them down bad enough to get rid of uh, whatever effects they may be coming after us. So here we go. This is for the, the first one I'm rolling for is the Griffin Howler. All right, here we go. Let's hope for something high. We got a six, nice. So that baddie is going to be stunned for two turns. And what we can do actually is maybe we'll, because we don't have many of them on the board, we'll put two stun dice on them to make it even more obvious that, uh, that we have to go through those particular rounds. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna roll the next die, and this die is gonna be for the Manticore. So here we go. Two, no! So this trap does nothing. So we were able to stun him, which is good because it stops him from flying away. So all of his active abilities, I don't believe, oh, let me take a quick look here to see whether the abilities still trigger. So on stun it says target loses its next turn, but negative effects, okay, so yep. Yeah. If they lose their turn, then none of their effects on their thing is going to trigger, so he's not gonna fly anywhere, meaning we have chances to knock him off the game board. The other thing that's really cool is he was the perfect one to get stunned. The reason being is signal, uh, one, if I'm not mistaken, I believe, let's see, it says, uh, add to the bottom of battle queue one additional baddie, one level below this baddie. Still occurs the number of times once per round. So what that means is, signal one means it's going to put a one point baddie, because that's underneath the fives, 
into the battle queue, or the, the baddie queue, I should say, and at the end of the round, it's gonna come into the game. It's gonna fill into whichever lane is open, so three would be the next one. Um, that's bad. So the fact that we actually were able to get a stun on those at the very beginning, based on the trap, so very thematic again. We had laid traps, remember, that was our choice. We decided to be the bait, and it looks like the Griffin Howler was uh, walked right into it, and it's now stunned for two turns, meaning that we can go after him to get him off the board to make sure no future baddies come from the queue into the map. Now, what about this guy in the back? He's a pain because if we do decide to go after this guy here who's uh, got flight and everything else, he's also got dive. Dives is a, is a flight effect that happens while the flight effect dies on your character. And if you start your turn, the character starts their turn with the flight die, it's immediately place, you immediately place his unit adjacent to the weakest available opposing unit. So basically, it'll just dive in. So if I had run over here, um, you know, he would just come flipping over here real quick. He wouldn't even like, so, I mean, yeah, it's, it's bad. It's probably worse off with more than one character. So me playing solo, this isn't as bad. Um, but just so, you're, just so you know how that works. And then over here with the mana core, we've got a poison too. The nasty thing with this is he's ranged. So he's gonna be able to sit in the back and just be annoying and keep hitting us with that silly poison damage for two, which will just keep that counter at two every single time until we get rid of him because he can hit us from anywhere on the battle mat. And he's got rage too, meaning that if he ever has uh, dice that have been, or sorry, if he's ever not at full HP, uh, then uh, he gains that number of additional attack dice, which is insane. So as soon as we knock him for one HP, he automatically gains two uh, attack dice, which is like him getting very upset. Uh, and, and so he doesn't have any, he, when it says gains additional, he doesn't have any in the first place. He's just poisoning us, but then he's gonna be able to attack us from range as well, which is really nasty. So anyway, we've got that covered. This guy's stunned. We're gonna have to figure out a strategy here as to how to take them down. So next up, we of course take the initiative die for our character and we get to throw that on. So I'm just gonna do a little cleanup here. We'll take this encounter card and put it on top. Now we're gonna go grab the uh, initiative dice. We'll get rid of this D6 because it's no, no use anymore. Here we go. This is where Patches is gonna sit on the initiative track. Four, there you go, look at that. Sits right in between. So at least, uh, I mean, regardless, I think with his initiative die, it looks like it's all threes and fours. So uh, either way, it looks like we would have been in the middle because we would have uh, matched this monster here. We've obviously chosen to go before it. So in this particular setup, we were bound to go in the center, um, but it, it will not always be the case because these uh, baddies are all different in their initiatives and things like that. So we're all set up here for battle now. So at this point, we can kind of trigger our starting stuff. Now, the only thing I haven't done, obviously, is I don't have patches on the battle mat yet. So. That's something I'm going to do now. So I'm gonna take patches, I'm gonna put him here, and we're gonna make some choices as to where he should start. Now, obviously starting right next to an opponent would be smart because I could make use of the stun effects by just nailing this guy before he even gets a chance to fly away on me, getting him off the board as soon as possible. I can use my three attack dice. I could even throw some defense on me, things like that to try to stop anything that's going to happen. Now his poison uh, that will come shooting at me and from range, my defense dice will not prevent that poison. Um, so that's kind of nasty. Um, so there's nothing you can do there because um, it ends up saying that it's in a poison effect die that goes in your character and you take two true damage. Meaning when it talks about true damage, it goes past your, your defense dice. So uh, with him, it looks like this is the smartest arrangement because not only once I kill this character or, or how hopefully kill it before he's unstunned, I can then book it over here and uh, within two decks and be right on top of this guy to do some damage. I also have um, toxins, so I could roll a toxins die. Now we haven't, we, I didn't take too much of a look at toxins besides uh, from the original video, but this would be on patches, sorry, not on the reference sheet. So. Well, let's take a quick look at the toxins die. The toxin die looks like this. It's just a regular poison type uh, uh, symbol. This one says poison jar. So you place a, place a numbered poison effect die on your target and uh, it, it's instantly. So this is gonna be just like when they poison me. So when this guy poisons me, I typically take one of these jars and it goes on top of me and every start of every single turn, I take that much damage and then it just counts down to the next number and so on. I've essentially got that exact same effect with my dice. My dice though, the toxin dice, says um, that I have a one, 
I have a three, I have two bones, I have two bones, I have two. So like you can do some toxin damage or you could potentially be boosting up your, uh, your backup plan, which is never bad. So uh, that is very, very cool. And I'll probably end up throwing that in the first round because um, my defense will do nothing. A defense die does nothing against this manticore. So for, when I start the next video, when we jump into the battle here and we cover the entire battle that we're just about to go through, my first roll will likely be three attack dice plus this toxin die. And what I may end up doing is trying to not only poison this guy for enough damage to kill him, but hopefully hit him for enough damage that I can then on the second turn run around and come up here and just start hammering on this guy and the toxins will do its work of taking care of this guy while the stun is still in play. That would be the best strategy. So even though these guys are really tough, there seems to be a way that I can kind of sneak out a win Thankfully, because of these stun dice. Otherwise, I'd be having baddies coming in the queue. So I rolled really lucky there and got um, the stun. Thank goodness for the traps that we had set. Uh, worked out really good. So anyway, hope you guys are enjoying so far. This is the setup to the encounter battle. So on day five, what I want you guys to do is to throw in any comments that you may have, suggestions about anything in terms of placement and stuff like that. Maybe if you don't think I should be here and I should be in one of these other spaces, let me know. I honestly think with this setup, this is the most efficient spot, being that I'm right beside the character who's stunned uh, or the baddie who's stunned already. So I don't think people are going to tell me to be putting it over here because I'd be wasting decks in any case to get to play to get to an enemy, which is really not going to make the most efficient use of my stun effects. So I think I'm already kind of set. So I doubt there'll be too many comments saying that I've lost my mind. However, if you see something that uh, you know, I did it a play or, or mess something up. Let me know in the comments, but I hope you guys are enjoying the videos. Actually, I don't even have to say I hope anymore. I know you guys are enjoying the videos because I can tell by the thumbs up and the support in the comments and the feedback, you guys are loving this game. And I think it's awesome because from what I've understood from Chip Theory Games is that they are doing their next shipment in July, August for this game. So if you haven't already got on and they actually still have this available in their store, I highly encourage you to jump on board. It's an amazing solo game. And I can tell you when I'm sitting here playing it, I really do enjoy it. Um, I don't do like reviews on my channel as of yet. I have not gone, to, gone down the road of saying like, this game is good, this game is not good. But in terms of solo play, replayability, component quality, uh, theme, this game is something I've never experienced before across a, a number of other games. It just has a vibe that's completely different than anything I've ever seen. And I really like it. And on top of it, setup wise, it's not like a table consuming type game. You could actually, if you were setting this up at home, you could have these mats cleanly in front of you. You could probably be playing two gear locks, which I'll likely do in future playthroughs of this game, which I will do in the future is play two gear locks at once. And it wouldn't take up that much more table space, just another mat and boom, you're ready to go. So. It's really nice that way. It's not a game that consumes your entire table and it's really cool because these mats can just lift and look at all the dice just come with them. You can pick it up, move it to another room, whatever. It's really cool. So anyway, long, long little gibberish on that, but uh, hope you guys are enjoying. Let me know. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you want to be notified of new videos in the future, do so because then that way you are not on uh, waiting for me to post it elsewhere uh, and you get a uh, first notification of when the next one comes out. So. Until the next time guys, keep on rolling solo.